Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we're talking on be content. Amen. Be content. Be content. And we'll go to our study chapter, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I'll read the King James and I'll also read the Amplified. Philippians chapter 4. Praise God. Philippians chapter 4. Chapter 4 and I'm reading from verses 10. From verses 10. Verse 10 says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me had flourished again, wherein you were also, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. 11. Now that I speak in respect, I'm sorry, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. 12. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be to bound to abound and to suffer need. Praise God. And of course, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now I'm going to read the amplified version. The Amplified Version, verses 10 to verses 13. Verse 10 says, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord, that now at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned about me before, but you had no opportunity to show it. 11. Now that I speak from, not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy, regardless of my situation, regardless of my circumstances. Verse 12 says, I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life. Whether well fed or going hungry. Whether having an abundance or being in need. Because I can do all things which he had called me to do. Through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient. In Christ's sufficiency, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit. You've infused us with inner strength. You've infused us with peace from within. We thank you, Lord, for your abundant grace. Even as we delve into your word, speak to us, dear God. Speak through us, dear God. Answer our cry, dear God. Receive our hearts cry. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to be staying more on the Amplified. Verse 10, I'll read that verse 10 again to you. He says, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that now at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned about me before, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now, of course, he was writing from the prison and he wrote to the women, praise God, in Philippi. These were women who were always givers. They were always helping him. He, because those women were, were the first converts he had if, in Philippi. If you go to the book of Acts, you find it there. These were his first converts and then started a church. Now, they, of course, there were division in the church. And these women, they were always looking for ways to bless, you know, to bless Apostle Paul. Praise God. And now they had the opportunity, amen, amen. to bless him even more. 
But you see, our quest in life is always what is next. Our quest in life is you want this. You want a better job. Our quest in life is you want a better house. You want a better future. You want a better life. Praise God. Our quest in life is you want a good car. There's always a quest for something. There's always a need for something. You get to a level, you find yourself dissatisfied. You want to move to the next level. Praise God. You want to acquire this. There's always a need for the next level. Amen. But look at verse 11. Verse 11 here, Paul is saying, Not that I speak from any personal need. He was telling these women, Not that I speak of any personal need. For I have learned to be content. I have learned to be self-sufficient through Christ. Satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy. Regardless of my circumstances. Regardless of it. Praise God. Paul is saying here that he says, I have learned. We're talking about be content. Praise God. He's saying, I have learned. Listen, to be content, you have to learn it. Contentment is about learning. You have to be learned. You have to learn to be content. Praise God. And you see, learning is an act. Learning is a process. A process of acquiring. Probably acquire knowledge. Praise God. Or you want to gain some kind of skills. Whatever it is, there is a learning. So contentment, you have to learn it. You have to learn to be content. It's a learning. Paul says, he says, not that I speak from any personal need but i have learned to be content we have to learn to be content is a learning praise god amen. amen now the question is how do you imagine paul making such a statement he said not that i speak of any personal need not that i speak of any personal want but he says i have learned to be content to be self-sufficient through christ now, for him to make such a bold statement, it's not because he has so many things. It's not because he is content with what he has. No. But this man is content not in what he has, but in whose he is. I'll say that again. Paul, not that he, you know, he, for him to make such bold statement, because he knew that his contentment is not in physical material things. His contentment is not in, you know, things that would perish. His contentment was that all he has do he's doing is in Christ Jesus, not in what he has, but in whose he is. He says he's self-sufficient through Christ. He is satisfied to the point where he is not disturbed on ease regardless of any situation praise god regardless of any situation that he may be in, or any situation you may find yourself always find yourself to be content be content be satisfied be satisfied with where you are because god is the one that will take you to the next level we find so many christians they want to feel among they want to you know, be, be competitive based on what is happening around them. They want to have the best this, the best that. There is nothing wrong in having the best this or the best that. But when you find yourself, you want to have 10 cars for no good reason. You can't drive those 10 cars at once. You have to drive a car. Praise God. And you have those cars that are just their part. And there are people who need these cars. Praise God. So learn to be content. Being content doesn't mean you should not have. To be content is you have, but you are satisfied Amen. with what you have. Amen. Praise God. You are satisfied with what you have. You know, there, there's, this, um, there's this brother. He went to see his pastor for counseling. And then when he got to his pastor, he said, Pastor, I'm in the midst of financial collapse. In the midst of financial collapse. Everything around me is going down. Everything around me. I've lost everything. Financially, my bank account is in red. 
Everything is gone. I've virtually lost everything. And then the pastor says, Oh, I'm so sorry that you know that you lost your faith. And the man, the brother said, Oh no, Pastor, I didn't lose my faith. I've not lost my faith. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, you lost your character. And the man said, No, Pastor, I didn't say I lost my character. Praise God. Oh, I'm sorry, the pastor says again. Oh, you lost. You lost your salvation. And the man looked at the pastor and said, No, no, no. I didn't lose my found, my, my, found, my salvation. Praise God. And then the pastor said, Okay, maybe you lost hope. And the man said, No, I didn't lose hope. I'm only in financial collapse. And then the, the pastor told him something. He said, You have not lost your faith. You've not lost your character. You've not lost your salvation. You've not lost your hope. It means you still have faith, you still have your character, you still have hope, you still have your salvation. He says these are the most important. Money is secondary, praise God. That you have your hope, you have your faith, you have salvation, you have life, and you have all it takes. He says this is the most important thing. This is what really matters. Praise God. But you see, so many Christians, they put it in the reverse. If there's no money, you see them down. If there's no financial blessing, you think their world has come to an end. But that is very, 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 very wrong. You're doing it in the reverse. As long as you're breathing this air, you have salvation in Christ. You have your faith still there. Hope still made alive. Your love is still moving forward. Guess what? That is the real thing. That is the real thing that matters. Praise God. Paul says, in whatever, not that I speak of any personal need. He says, I've learned to be what? Content. What is the meaning of being content? Praise God. Let me read what I wrote down here. To be content is to be satisfied. To be content is to have freedom from anxiety, freedom from worry, freedom from every pain. To be content is, you know, to be grateful, be grateful, be appreciative, praise God. Like someone defined contentment. He said contentment is the secret of inward peace and i love that definition the secret of inward peace and that's the truth if you want to have inward peace the secret the secret you need to have an inward peace is contentment be content praise god be content inward peace be satisfied to be content means you refuse to complain. Even when all hell is broke loose. Even when things are not going well. Even when things are not going as it should. Refuse. Refuse to be dissatisfied. But be satisfied in Christ. Amen. Amen. Because you see, our enemy is not the possession that we have. Our enemy is not the things that we have. Our enemy is the excess. Praise God. I'll say it again. Our enemy is not in the possession. There's nothing wrong in having a good house. There's nothing having, wrong in having a good car. There's nothing wrong in having something beautiful. Living in a good place. Because even the Bible says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. It says, I have come. To give you life. That you may enjoy life to the full. That's the reason why he came onto this earth. For us to enjoy life. But enjoying life, it is not about the possession. Praise God. So our enemy is not in the possession. Our enemy is the excess. The excess. Praise God. The excess. Because for, a, for the Christian, commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ is more than enough. Is more than enough. Your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ is more than enough. Amen. 
You know why? Because commitment, contentment, they are both virtues. Praise God. They are virtues. The virtues of the kingdom of God. So as much as possible, don't live on the excess. Live on the contentment and the commitment that Jesus is enough. He is enough for you. Even when you're down, he is enough. Even when things are down, he is enough. Even when you seem that the circumstance you're hoping to change has not changed, Jesus is still enough. Praise God. Paul says in verse 11, it says, not that I speak from any personal need. Praise God. This man is in prison and he's still writing, not that I speak of any personal need. He says, for I have learned to be content. Whatever it is that he has, he has learned to be self-sufficient. But his self-sufficiency is not in himself, but in Christ. His sufficiency is in Christ. He says, I'm satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed. Get to that level where you are not disturbed. Praise God. When things begin to shake you, get to that level where you are satisfied inside of you that Jesus is enough. And he is able to make all grace abound towards you. He is able to solve the problem. He is able to do it. Amen. Don't forget he sees tomorrow. He knows tomorrow. He knows next year 2021. He knows 2022. He knows 2030. He knows what's going to happen in the future. Because he is already in the future. Praise God. This Bible is more up to date than yesterday or tomorrow's newspaper. I'll say it again. This Bible is more up to date than tomorrow's newspaper. Because Christ is already there. So be at that level that you are not disturbed. Yes, you know the circumstances, the trials, the situations are there. But don't let it disturb your spirit. Praise God. Amen. He says regardless of any circumstance. Praise God. I want to read some things I wrote down here. But the question I want to throw out is. Where does contentment reside? Where does contentment reside? Praise God. Where does it reside? Contentment. Praise God. Contentment resides in your heart. That's where it resides. Contentment re resides in your heart. Contentment resides deep inside of you. Now let me read four points that I wrote down here on this. I said contentment isn't denying one's feelings about wanting and desiring that thing they can't have. But instead, contentment exhibits a freedom for being controlled by those feelings. Praise God. I said the second point. I said contentment isn't pretending things are right. You know things might not be okay. You know things are not going as it should. Praise God. Amen. But instead, it is for you to display the peace that comes from knowing that God is bigger than any problem. is bigger than any situation. And that he works for your good. He works everything out for your good. Praise God. You're not denying the fact that yes, there are problems. You're not denying the fact that yes, there are issues, there are situations. But the fact that you know that you have a God who is bigger than this issue. Bigger than the problem. Bigger than the situation. Bigger than the circumstance. Amen. Why? Because contentment resides inside of you. I said contentment isn't a feeling of well-being. Contingent on keeping circumstances under control. But instead, contentment promotes a joy inside of you. Even when it seems all hell is loose, you still maintain the joy inside of you. Praise God. You know, there are some Christians, when you know they are down, when things are not working for them, you can literally feel it. You can see it from their physical appearance. You can hear it from their voices. You can see it in their faces. 
that something isn't going well. Praise God. Some of them, they actually want to feel, you know, oh, can you love me? Feel to be loved. Amen. But to be candid with you, no matter how much, as a Christian, no matter how much the pressure is, never let it dictate the joy of God in you. Praise God. Never let it dictate the joy of, of God in you. Amen. Contentment is not based on external circumstances. I'll say that again. Contentment is not based on external circumstances. It's not based on the world system. It's not based on things happening around you. No. Contentment is based on your an inner source. An inner source. You carry, there's a God in you that brings the peace. That inward peace. That is where contentment lies. Amen. It is not based on what's happening around you. Praise God. It's not based on that. Amen. Contentment is of the heart. Is of the heart. Amen. And that's why Paul is telling us here. He's saying the secret to being happy. The secret to live a fruitful and a productive life. The secret to enjoy a better future. Is one to be content. Amen. The secret of happiness is to be content. You have to be content. Your happiness is not dependent on life circumstances. Praise God. Just like I tell my kids, no one can make you sad. No one can make you happy. They are all choices. You choose to be happy. You choose to be sad. Praise God. So for your happiness to be constant, you have to be content that you carry Christ in you. He is more than enough for you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Yes, I understand there may be days that you feel sad, you know, but that does not mean your happiness should go low. Praise God. Your happiness is not contingent to your sadness. Praise God. When you feel, when you feel that time, that does not mean your joy has gone low. But instead, maintain the joy. Let sadness go low. Maintain the happiness. Maintain the joy. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to go into the scripture briefly and look at, you know, the secrets that Paul used of being content. The secret that Paul had of being content. What are the secrets, amen, of being content? Amen. What are the secrets? What is the secret? Of being content. Now let's look at verses 12. Amen. Verse 12 says, I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. Praise God. What is the secret of being content? Listen to what Paul is saying. Verse 12, Philippians 4, Amplified. He says, I know how to get along. And live humbly in difficult times. One of the secrets of being content is live humbly. Be humble. The King James says, I learn how to abase and to abound. Praise God. Live humbly. Be humble. Praise God. That is one secret to contentment. Be humble. Praise God. Because pride kills. It befalls a man. But Paul is saying here, even while he's in the prison, he says, I live humbly. Praise God. I know how to get along in difficult times. How? One, to live humbly. Be humble. Humility is a watchword. A word that will help you in life. Praise God. Say, I am humble. Say, I'm humble. Say, humility is mine. Say, I'm content of what I have. Because all I have is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Praise God. Amen. So, Paul is saying here, the first way for you to stay content is to live humbly. He says, I, in the difficult times, I live humbly. Amen. Now let's go ahead. He says, and I also know how to abound and to enjoy abundance 
and live in prosperity. Powerful. Firstly, he know he said, I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. Now he says, and I know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. The second point is enjoy what you already have. Enjoy what you already have. Praise God. There are so many, so many, you know, you want Prada bag. You want that shoe. You go to someone's closet. You see almost 100 shoes. Shoes that you cannot wear at once. You see women, they, some women, they lost so, much, so many bags. You go to their closet, they have 50 bags. You can't carry even five bags at once. You can't even carry two bags. You find yourself just, you know, piling up, should I say hoarding, piling up stuff. Amen. Hoarding stuff here and there. Anyone you think, oh, I have five Prada bags, I have this Gucci, I have that, that, and then they have it in store. That's all vanity, as my first lady said. Praise God. The candy truth is you have a boutique. Start selling what you have. Amen. Start selling it. Amen. Praise God. So Paul is saying here, he says, and also I know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. In other words, enjoy what you have. Enjoy what you have. Praise God. Whatever it is you have, enjoy it. Don't begin to get stuff because this is the raining stuff. And then you now abandon what you already have. Enjoy what you have. It is not about the name. It is not about that name. But it's about Christ in you. The hope of glory. Praise God. Enjoy. Paul enjoyed it. He, this man was in the prison writing letters. And he says, I know how to enjoy greatness. I know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. So the first is live humbly. If you want to know the secret of being content, live humbly. Be humble. Humility is essential. Two, enjoy what you already have. Don't start waiting for what you don't have. Enjoy what you have right now. At the right time, others will come in. Praise God. And then look at it again. Verse 12. Verse 12 says, be part. He says, in any and every circumstance. He says, I have learned the secret of facing life. He says, whether well fed or going hungry. He said, whether having an abundance or being in need. Praise God. Enjoy what you already have. That is the best thing. Now look at verse 13. He gives us the third point. Verse 13 says, Paul is saying, I can do all things which he has called me to do. He says, through him who strengthens me and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. He says, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Amen. The third point here is find sufficiency in Christ. If you want to live content, find sufficiency in Christ. Because Christ is sufficient for you. You might not have some things right now. But as long as you have Christ in you, you are sufficient. He says, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Amen. Now that was, know that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Praise God. If you go to the book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20, praise God. I want to read that to you, Matthew 17 verse 20. Now this is Jesus, you know, we, when um, the, a man brought his son who had epilepsy, epilepsy, you know, he was epileptic. And then he took his son to the disciples, but the disciples could not cure him. They could not heal him. And then they now went to, took his son to Jesus and Jesus healed the son. And then the disciples asked him, asked Jesus, why could not we cast this demon out? Look at verse 17. Jesus, is, he answered, because of your little faith. He says, your lack of trust and confidence in the power of God. 
Amen. He says your lack of confidence in the power of God. When you are sufficient in Christ, everything flows. Now he says, for I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have faith to the size of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there. And if it is God's will, it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Your sufficiency is in Christ. If he is your sufficiency, nothing will be impossible for you. God is ever sufficient. There's nothing in this life that you need, you require, you want, that God is not able to make available. Don't forget what he did. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Praise God, which means everything in this earth at the snap of his finger can be yours. But you have to learn to be content. Be sufficiently content in his sufficiency. Praise the Lord. That is one way. If you look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5. It says not that I am sufficient of myself to think of anything of myself. That's what Paul is saying. But he's saying but my sufficiency is of God. 2 Corinthians 2, 3, verse 5. He says the sufficiency is of God. My sufficiency is of God. I'm sufficient in Him. Praise God. Amen. So the first point to living, you know, the secret of being content is be humble. Live a humble life. Live a humble life. And the second is enjoy what you already have. The third is find sufficiency in Christ. In other words, know that all things are possible through Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then the fourth, you know, some days I, I receive a very, very unpleasant information, unpleasant news. Amen. And, you know, it, it made me sad. But in that sadness, it did not take away the peace of God from me. I'm not denying the fact that the flesh can be sad, but the peace of God did not leave. The joy of the Lord stayed in me. And then when I took out time to pray, as I was praying, and the Lord spoke. And this could be one word for someone who is listening to me right now. You probably are going through one challenge. You probably received some unpleasant information. You probably had some issues popping up here and there. God says to tell you, and this is what he told me. And I want to tell that to you. God says it's okay. Yeah. He's able. Amen. And when I spoke to me, I heard it so clear. He said, son, it's okay. I'm able. And then when he told me, that led to my fourth point. He said it clearly. And the fourth point he gave to me was, live one day at a time. That's what he said. Live one day at a time. Live each day at a time. Praise God. That's what he told me. He said, as I live one day at a time, I should forget the past and keep pressing on. That is a word for you right now. If you find yourself in a situation, you find yourself in an unpleasant state, you receive some very, very, you know, disturbing information. Things that would affect you. God is saying to tell you right now, it's okay. He's able. He's telling you to say, live one day at a time. Live one day at a time because our God will supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. He will supply all your need. Amen. All you need to do right now is to surrender your timetable and surrender your future to Him. Surrender it to Him. Sometimes we find that our flesh begins to dictate the next level. Refuse to let that happen. Praise God. Sometimes you find yourself doing things and then you regret what you have done. Praise God. God is saying to you right now, 
let go of the past. Live one day at a time. He says, it's okay. I'm with you. I'm your shield. I'm your guide. I'm your protector. I can do all things for you. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He says, no one, no other God can compare to what I have done. I died for you. I rose for you. I am for you. So I encourage you, as you go about this week, as you go about the remaining part of the month, as you go about to the end of the year, into 2021, always have this at the back of your mind. Live one day at a time. In Christ, all things are possible. Because with Him, nothing is impossible. Put your focus on God. Put your timing on God. The Bible says, looking on to Jesus, the author, the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Looking on to Jesus, put your attention on Him. Let the problem be there. Let it be there. But the only solution you can get is in God. Because he has seen the future already. No man can stop you. No man. Let God be the source of your strength. This week I pray for you. That as you go about this week, go about the remaining part of the month. As you go about into the remaining part of the year. Dear God. I ask that, Lord, you give them strength from deep within. You give them inner peace that no man can give. You give them satisfaction from the realm of the Spirit. Even as you come boldly to the throne of grace, Lord, we obtain mercy. Mercy, Lord. We ask for forgiveness, dear God. If there's anything we've done in the past as a result of our flesh, Lord, forgive us. Because your word says, faithful is he that called us and will do it. Lord, we thank you because, Lord, you've forgiven us. You faithfully called us and, Lord, your forgiveness is guaranteed. We thank you, dear God. We honor your name. Those who are going through any challenge right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord says it is okay. I have gone before you. I have made a way before you. I am the cloud you need by day and the fire by night. I am with you all the way. As I parted the Red Sea in the time of trouble, I am parting every situation in your favor. And I am bringing you out on the other side a victor. Testimonies will come before you. The miraculous is yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, I receive. I receive with my spirit. I receive your solution. I receive your answer. I receive your strength. I receive that inner peace. It is mine. It is mine. It's in my heart. Now, my focus is on you, God. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. My faith is on the rise. Open your mouth where you are right now. Begin to pray. Begin to thank Him. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Oh, we give you praise, dear God. Baraki Pali.